Email, bdean at budnet.net. Website, www.budnet.net. Buddha Dharma Education Association Incorporated. Translated by Yubhasika Chi Man. The Vows of Bodhisattva. Samantapidra Sutra. The Vows of Bodhisattva. Samantapidra Sutra. He O W S. Of. Bodhisattva. Amantapidra. Yudra. Translated by. Yupasika Chi Man. 4. Dedication. May all living beings come to know. Practice and benefit from the sublime Dharma. May all share the merits of this Dharma giving end. Attain the wisdom that can liberate from all suffering. 5. Contents. Dedication. 4. Contents. 5. On entering into the inconceivable state of emancipation by the practice. Vows. Of the Bodhisattva Samantapidra of the Mahavipilya Buddha Avatamsaka Sutra. 6. Chapter XXXIV. 7. The Aspiration of Bodhisattva Samantapidra. 60. The Ten Great Vows. Of Bodhisattva Samantapidra. 70. The Praise to Bodhisattva Samantapidra. Chanted on his birthday. 71. Verse of Transference. 72. 6. On entering into the inconceivable state of emancipation by the practice vows of the Bodhisattva Samantapidra of the Mahavipilya Buddha Avatamsaka Sutra 7. Chapter XXXIV When the Bodhisattva 1. Mahasattva 2. Samantapidra. 3. Having discoursed upon and eulogized the exalted merits and virtues of the Tathagata. 4. Addressed the Kumara. 1. A Bodhisattva is a Buddha to be whose rank is immediately below that of a Buddha. But it is not necessarily inferior to the state of Buddhahood. In perfection, as a bodhisattva may also be a Buddha, who renounces Buddhahood in order to remain in touch with the beings of various worlds, in order to sustain and support them with his spiritual power, and so help forward their attainment of nirvana. 2. Mahasattva means a great being, or one of noble character. 3. Samantapidra is a great bodhisattva, one of the principal bodhisattvas. The other being Manjusri, they are the two subordinates of the Tathagata. Or Tyani Buddha, Varokana, and known as the Triple Saints of the Avatmasaka Sutra. Samanta means general or universal, Vajra means sage, and Samantapidra which is derived from these words, means the principle of universal love or compassion. He is also known as the Bodhisattva of Great Activity. Samantapidra is also known as the University or Sally Worthy Bodhisattva, is one of three venerables of the Lord Buddha. Sakyamuni. He is always on the right side of the Buddha Sakyamuni. Rev. Resenting the guardian of the law, the lord of the law and the practice of all Buddhas. Samantapidra usually reposes with dignity on a six-tusked white elephant, while Bodhisattva Manjusri rides on a lion. He holds a sword indicating that the law is the basis of wisdom. Samantapidra is 
the patron of the Lotus Sutra and its devotees, and has close connection with the Avatamsaka Sutra. Samantapidra is assigned his universe in the East. In China, people worship Samantapidra as the object of pilgrimage. In Ime Shan, mountain, which is regarded as his dwelling place. Samantapidra is a great bodhisattva of the tenth stage, with the Pradik. Guler quality representing cultivation and practice. He is one of the four. Great Bodhisattvas, the Bodhisattva of Great Conduct. He has ten great vows, which are the scope of practices in Buddhism, refer to the ten great vows. Regarding his past history, he was said to be born by being transformed from a lotus of the seven gems by means of his wisdom. 8. Sudhana. 5. And a great company of bodhisattvas as follows. O noble-minded man, the infinite merits and virtues of the Tathagata are ineffable. If such were preached by all the Buddhas. 6. Of the ten quarters. 7. Who consecutively and o merated them during unspeakable and incalculable eons. 8. 4. Tathagata is an appellation of Buddhas, and means one who has attained full realization of suchness, i.e. become one with the Absolute Body of Law, Dharmakaya, so that he neither comes from anywhere Anayagamana, nor goes to anywhere, Anagaman. He is the norm which has thus appeared. 5. Kumara Sutvina i.e. the celestial youth of the treasure of merit, who, having consecrated his life to the attainment of Buddhahood, vis. i. 53 saints, and finally met the Bodhisattva Samantapidra, who advised him to be born in Sukhavati, the most happy world of the Buddha Amitabha, by means of practicing the tenfold vow. The Account is given in the Avatamsaka Sutra. 6. Buddha, the highest degree of saintship of an enlightened being. Any person who has attained transcendental wisdom, and has broken the bondage of birth and death, is ready to enter nirvana. There have been innumerable Buddhas in the past, and there will be others becoming Buddhas in the future. 7. The ten quarters are north, south, east, west, northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest, the nadir, and the zenith. 8. On i.e. kulpa is an age or great period not to be reckoned by usual calendars, during which the evolution in four divisions of a physical universe have taken place. The divisions are, 1, the Antara Kulpa, in which the universe is formed, 2, the Vivartasada Kulpa, in which the universe possesses stability, 3, the Samvarta Kulpa, in which the universe is gradually destroyed, 4, the Sunya Kulpa, in which the uni verse disappears. Then the process of cosmic activity begins again in a cyclic evolution. The kulpas are divided into three measures, one, a great kulpa of 1,344,000,000 years, two, a medium kulpa of 336,000,000 years, three, a small kulpa of 16,800,000 years. Calculated by the solar system. 9. In the Buddha domains equal to the smallest dust motes. 9. In the atmosphere, in number, they could not thereby be exhausted. 
If, there be any who, aspire to attain this high state of merit, let them understand that, its realization depends upon the attainment of the tenfold Padmamita. 10. The vows of widest and highest aspiration and the actual practice of them. But what is the tenfold Padmamita? You might ask. It is. First, to pay the highest homage and veneration to all Buddhas. Second, to preach the virtues of, and to praise the glories of, the Tathagatas. Third, to make abundant offerings for the veneration to the Buddhas. 9. Dust motes, paramana, do not mean fine, dry particles of earth, but are the atoms or ultimate units of the ratified matter of the superphysical planes of being. They are waves of vibration of inconceivable rapidity, and are used to symbolize numbers or quantities of inconceivable magnitude. 10. Padmamitas are the six stages of study and practice followed by the Bodhisattvas in their progress to Buddhahood. They are charity or alms, giving, observance of precepts, patience, perseverance or joyous effort, meditative concentration, wisdom. There are also the ten Padmamitas. See the text of this version. The Chinese version of this text refers to the term Padmamita as the gate or path through which the saints enter and cross to the other shore of Buddha land. 10. Fourth, to be penitent and confess one's evil deeds and hindrances. 11. Fifth, to approve of and rejoice at the merits and veer. Tuesday of others. 12. Sixth, to request Buddhas to set in motion the wheel of Dharma. 13. Seventh, to beseech Buddhas to remain in the world. 14. Eighth, to be a zealous follower of the way of the Buddhas forever. Ninth, to be always in harmony with all beings, bestowing on them gifts according to their needs. Tenth, to turn over all one's merits to benefit all beings. Fifteen. Eleven. Hindrances refer to the evil deeds committed in the past, in the present life and in the previous lives, such are now obstacles in the path to enlightenment, and have to be overcome by severe penitence and strong meritorious deeds. Twelve. To approve of and rejoice in the merits of others, instead of being jealous us of them. 13. To set in motion the wheel of Dharma means proclaiming the dock. Trine of the Buddha to the world. 14. To beseech the Buddhas to remain in the world, instead of entering into Nirvana. 15. To turn over one's merits to all beings, is to refuse the rewards of merit. One has earned for oneself and hand them over for the credit of others. This is a practical realization of the doctrine of Mahayana of no ego. Anatta. 11. The Kumara Sutthana said to the Bodhisattva Samanta, Bhadra, what course shall we follow, O noble one, to full? Fill all these virtues, from rendering homage to Buddhas. 2. Turning over one's own merits to all beings? The Bodhisattva Samantapadra replied to the Kumara, Sutthana, O noble-minded man, as to what is said regard. In the homage and worship of the Buddhas, it means that, by the power of the virtues and the vows of the Bodhi, Sattva Samantapadra, I, note I means any person, have, 
profound faith and deep understanding. As though I were face to face simultaneously with all the Buddhas of all the Buddha worlds, such Buddhas, equal to the flying smallest dust motes in number, throughout the worlds of Dharma and the cosmic void of the ten quarters and the three ages. 16. I worship and adore them constantly with my Pure deeds viz. The bodily. 17. Vocal. 18. And mental deeds. 19. 16. The three ages, triadva, are great periods comprising the past, present, and future, which we arbitrarily divided. 17. Bodily deeds are the bodily actions, they may be either noble or evil. Deeds The evil bodily deeds are those such as taking of life, this includes the killing of any being, human, or animal, theft, all forms of acquiring for oneself that which belongs to another, and sensuality, all forms of sex indulgence. 18. Speech deeds are the result of speech, the evil oral deeds being lying, slam, daring, double-crossing tongue, which means to speak ill of one friend to another, thus causing ill-feeling and dissension between them, abusive lamb, gauge, harsh and unkind language and obscene and frivolous language. 12. Before every Buddha in the Buddha land, I present myself by miraculous transformation in unutterable and inuable mirable bodies like unto the smallest specks of dust in number. With every one of my manifestations I pay hom age to all the Buddhas of every Buddha domain and such. Buddhas are equal to the smallest dust motes in number. My homage will be ended when the limitation of the infinite space is ended, as the space is boundless, so also is my home. 19. Mental deeds refer to either noble or evil thoughts. The evil thoughts are covetousness, malice, anger and ill will, and infatuation or fool. Ishness. The bodily deeds, speech deeds, and mental deeds are known as three deeds, the results from action, or speech, or thought. The effects, whether meritorious or sinful, depend on the motives, whether noble or evil. All karmas are controlled by the threefold deed. The Details of the three deeds which constitute the tenfold karma are the three deeds of the body, four deeds of the mouth, and three deeds of the mind, as above stated. If one has committed these deeds which are of an evil nature, then he is bound by a system known as the tenfold vice, das akusala. The ten meritorious deeds Dasampadra are the positive virtues reversing to the aforesaid ten vices, for instance, once one frees oneself from the tenfold wickedness, he is regarded as having performed the ten meritorious deeds. Deed means something that is done, even though the actual doing or committing sin may have taken place in the past yet its karma thereof will continue to exist, and will work out its retributive effect sooner or later. So one is liable to reap what he sows, unless the cause is removed by a further strong action which reverses his previous deed. A great merit attained by some noble action, or a great sin committed would deprive him of the merit acquired by his past noble deed. The ten meritorious deeds will be reward to any performer, either in this 
present life or in one of his future lives, the choice of being born in the heavenly or human worlds. Should he devote such good deeds to Bodhi, they will be credited to his Buddhahood. 13. Age to the Buddhas without end. So it is, when the spheres of beings are ended, the karmas. 20. Of beings are ended, the sorrows of beings, klesa. 21. Are ended, these two, are end. Less, even so is my homage to all the Buddha's endless thought following upon thought without interruption. 22. And in bodily, vocal, and mental deeds without weariness. Again, O noble-minded man, what signifies to preach, the virtues of, and to praise, the glories of, the Tathagatas? It means that in the smallest dust motes of all the worlds, of the ten quarters, and the three ages throughout the twenty, karma is the law of cause and effect, it mostly applies to the act of Indi, vigils, but it may be applied to the united result action of many people. Together, such as the groups of persons, families, nations, etc. So there is group karma, family karma, and national karma. The result of karma, whether favorable or unfavorable, depends on past deeds, whether good or evil. It is not limited to the actions of the present life, but may extend back into infinite past and forward into the infinite future. It is karma that forms the connecting link between one's consecutive lives. And it is also most imperative, thereby making one's life a mixture of misery and happiness. Buddhas teach us how to break the fetters of karma and escape from rebirth. 21. Kilsa means sorrows, vexation, suffering, anger, ill will, infatuation, greed, and includes all forms of passion. 22. Thought succeeds thought without interruption. The minds of ordinary beings are weak and vacillating, a thought cannot be sustained without interruption, but the mind of a devotee can be firmly fixed, and in the case of a bodhisattva such as Samantapadra, there is no cessation or vacillation. 14. Dharma circles and the cosmic void, upon each speck of dust, there the Buddhas are dwelling, equal in number to the smallest specks of dust of all the worlds. 23. And each Buddha is surrounded by an assembly of bodhisattvas, as white as the ocean. I shall apply my profound insight and my temporal no Pledge to fathom them till I thoroughly understand, then will I praise them with my oration, as though it were with the angelic and eloquent tongues of the goddess. Sarasvati 24 Each tongue emitting a boundless ocean of all forms of sound, each voice emitting a boundless ocean of all forms of speech, proclaiming the ocean of the merits of all Tathagatas. Such praises shall continue without CES. Sation through endless time and the limitless realms of the Dharma worlds. 23. A thing large in size or number which can be contained in an atom with without impediment is made possible under the law of spiritual freedom. Isvara, beyond the limitations of space, and those which enter into the twinkling thought, are beyond the limitation of time. A singular number transformed into a plural, or a plural embodied in a singular, 
Our ideas come into Buddhism, and especially are found in the Avatam. Sakha Sutra They express paradoxes too profound in meaning to enable intellectual explanation to be given. Hundreds of volumes of explana Tori commentaries on the Avatam Sakha Sutra have been written in the effort made to elucidate its profound doctrines. 24. Sarasvati is the Hindu goddess of eloquence who possesses many tongues, each tongue having many voices. 15. My praises will cease when the void of space is ended, or the spheres of beings are ended, or the karmas of beings are ended, or the sorrows of beings are ended. But all they Things from the space of the void even to the sorrows of Beings are endless, so also are my praises endless, thought Succeeding thought without interruption, and in bodily Vocal, and mental deeds without weariness Again, O noble-minded man, what is meant by abundant Offerings out of veneration to the Buddhas? It means that in the smallest dust motes of the Buddha domains of the Dharma circles and of the cosmic void, and of the ten quar. Tis in three yugas. 25. In each speck of dust exist the Buddhas, equal in number to the smallest dust motes of all worlds. Each Buddha is surrounded by an ocean wide assembly of bodhisattvas in whom I have profound faith and reverent understanding through the power of the vows of the Bodhisattva Samantapadra. I would offer them the most rare and wondrous gifts such as the flowery clouds. 26. Garland clouds, heavenly music clouds, celestial tapestry. 25. Yuga is a period of time. The three yugas are the past, the present, and the future. A yuga is one thousandth part of a kalpa. 16. Clouds, angelic garment clouds, all kinds of heavenly pur. Fumes, scented bombs, aromatic incenses, aromatic powders. Each equal in quality to Mount Samuru. 27. The King of Mount Tains. I would present lighted lamps of various kinds, such as the cream lamps, the oil lamps, and the lamps of sweet perfumes. The wick of each lamp being in size as Mount Samuru, the King of Mountains and the burning oil of each as great as the water of the ocean ceaselessly would I offer such gifts in veneration O noble-minded man, among all gifts, the crown of them are the gifts of Dharma such gifts are called, the offering of following the instructions, of all the Buddhas, the offering of benefits for all beings, the offering of embracing an S.U.S. Taining all beings, the offering of taking upon oneself the suffering of others, the offering of fostering the root of merit. Diligently, the offering of swerving not from the Bodhisattva vows, and the offering of departing not from the love of the Bodhi heart. 28. 26. Clouds mean that the quantity of gifts is as great as that of the clouds, or the term may have a symbolic meaning. The Chinese term refers to actual clouds. 27. Samuru is the heavenly mountain, its height being 168,000 yajanas. Some say that it is the axis of the universe and forms the solar system. Numerous commentaries have been given to it, which here are omitted.
17. O noble-minded man, truly the merit to be derived from the offering of material gifts, such as those enumerated, are infinite, yet, in comparison with a single thought of Dharma, they are as nothing. Those merits, derived from material offerings, would not be equal to a hundredth part of the merit of a thought of Dharma, nay, not to a hundred thousandth part of Kodis. 29. Of Nayudas, of Kalans, and of Upanishads. And why? Because the Dharma is held in the highest esteem by all the Tathagatas. Moreover, all the Buddhas are begotten from the Dharma, through the perfecting of their conduct in accordance with it. If the Bodhisattvas make offerings to the Dharma, to the Buddhas, then their offerings to the Tathagatas are calm, pledged. Thus do the Bodhisattvas present the truest offer ing of gifts to the Tathagatas. My offering of such great and noble gifts to Buddhas will cease if the cosmic void of space is ended, or, the spheres of beings are ended, or, the karmas of beings are ended. 28. Bodhi heart is the inner perception of absolute wisdom and all. Embracing love that pours forth as compassion for all living beings. It is the fruit of truth in the spiritual heart of mankind, the fruition of which is Buddhahood. 29. Kodi, Nayuta, Kala, etc., are terms indicating an infinity of multiplication. 18. Or, the sorrows of beings are ended. But as all the things from the space of the void to the sorrows of all beings are endless, so also will my offering to Buddhas be endless. Thought succeeding thought without interruption, in Bhat. ILY, vocal, and mental deeds without weariness. Again, O noble-minded man, what is meant by being paining? Tent and confessing one's evil deeds and hindrances? A. Bodhisattva would think thus, all the evil deeds. 30. I have committed hitherto during the kulpas without beginning of the past caused by the emotion of lust, hatred, and stupidity. Leading to bodily, speech, and mental actions are bound. Less. If such deeds were corporeal and in forms, all the costs. Mike's space is unlimited as it is, could not contain them. I now confess and repent them all, by my three purified deeds. 31. And with a sincere heart, pledging myself not to commit an evil deed hereafter, I will always keep myself pure in the prohibitive precepts, and in all active moral deeds. I will lay this penitence before all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of all worlds and Dharma circles equal in 30. See Hindrance 11. 31. See bodily deeds 17, speech deeds 18 and mental deeds 19. 19. Number to the smallest dust motes. My penitence will cease when the void of space is ended, or, the spheres of beings are ended, or, the karmas of beings are ended, or, the sorrows of beings are all ended. But as all they Things from the void of space to the sorrows of beings are endless, so also is my penance endless. Thought succeeding thought without interruption, in Bhat. ILY, vocal, and mental deeds without weariness. Again, O noble-minded man, what is meant by approving 
Up and rejoicing at the merits and virtues of others? In Buddha lands, the Buddhas, equal in number to the small. EST dust motes of all the worlds, throughout all the Dharma circles and cosmic void, of the ten quarters and in the duration of the three yugas, have devoted their lives to the sole purpose of acquiring all wisdom, and diligently accumulating merit. Since they began to direct their minds toward Bodhi. 32. Throughout the duration of unutterable and innumerable kulpas and in Buddha domains, equal in number to the smallest dust motes of all worlds. During 32. Refer to Bodhi Hard 28. 20. Each kulpa, having sacrificed their heads, eyes, hands, and feet, in unutterable and incalculable numbers as the small EST dust motes of Buddha spheres, having thus overcome all difficulties, and accomplished all the arduous tasks, perfected the various stages of Patamita, passing through the experiences of the Bodhisattva wisdom, and Akam, pleased the highest Bodhi of Buddhas till entered into Parinirvana. 33. Whereupon they distributed the Saras. 34. All such good roots of merit I emulate and rejoice in. Moreover, whatever merit or virtue may be possessed by any being, either of the six divisions of existence. 35. Or belonging to the four kinds of birth. 36. Or appertaining to any species of life in the worlds of the ten quarters, though such merit may be as infinitesimal as a grain of dust, all will have my sympathy and corresponding regard, with all such I rejoice. 33. Parinirvana, the final emancipation from the limits of existence, in which all attributes of phenomenal existence cease, the extreme stillness, and the supreme state of peace. 34. Saras are the relics to be found in the bones of a Buddha or a Bodhi. Sattva, after cremation. They are in the shape of pearls, extremely hard, and of brilliant colors. The term Saras also has its wider sense. The expression is here used with the symbolic meaning that such beings will use every particle of themselves in the service of others, even to the dust of their relics. 21. Again, all the Sravakas. 37. The Pratyaka Buddhas. 38. The thoroughly learned ones. 39. And those who are still to be advanced on the path of disciples, all such are the saints of the ten quarters and the three generations, with whom I rejoice in their merit if any may be possessed. 35. The six divisions or the six states of existence are existence in the Heaven worlds, Devalokas, the human state of existence, the state of assurance, semi-blessed beings, powerful, but fierce and quarrelsome of nature, who are thought of as half good and half evil, but who are never the less included among the three good states of existence, the three bad states are those of the animals, the hungry ghosts, and the state of those in the various hells or the purgatorial regions. These six divisions are not dominated by a tyrant who created all beings from mankind to bedbugs, houseflies, etc. Such a theory certainly is false. The various 
beings fall into such divisions themselves, by their own karmas, which are either of noble aspirations, or downward deeds. 36. The four kinds of birth are, born from the womb, from the egg, from heat and moisture, and by metamorphosis. 37. Sravakas are the hearers, a grade of disciples in the Hinayana school, who attain liberation through a pious life, but who lack the intellectual power of the Pratyaka Buddhas, and the active compassion of the Bodhisattvas. 38. Pratyaka Buddha is one who attains enlightenment along the line of intellect. He attains the goal by self-discipline, but lacks the loving self. Sacrifice of the Bodhisattvas, and is in consequence less esteemed by mankind. 39. The thoroughly learned one or perfected in discipline, Saiksa. There are four grades of attainments in the Hinayana school, the small Vehi. Kli, namely the Srotapana, which means, he who has reversed the curve. Rent of birth and death. The sacred Agaman is he who has but one more. Birth before the attainments of Nirvana. The Anagaman is he who will. Never return to this state of existence. The Arhat is he who is free from. Attachment to existence, and can attain Nirvana whenever he chooses to. Pass away from life. With the exception of the Arhat, all these need to learn more discipline. 22. All the Bodhisattvas who through infinite self-sacrifice and boundless achievement have overcome all obstacles and having formed the wish to attain the highest goal of Bodhi. With them also I rejoice in their vast merits. Thus, even though the void of space together with the states of beings, with the karmas of beings, with the SOR rows of beings, though all these be ended, yet my approval and joy in the merits of all beings will not be ended. Thought succeeding thought without interruption, in bot, ily, vocal, and mental deeds without weariness. Again, O. Oh, Noble-minded man, what is meant by beseeching the Buddhas to set in motion the wheel of Dharma? 40. It means that I will apply my body, speech, and mental efforts, and various expedient means, and the most skillful methods, earnestly to request the Buddhas to rotate the wondrous wheel of Dharma, such Buddhas are in Kalkul, able in number as the smallest, flying, dust motes of the Buddha domains of the Ten Quarters, and the Three Yugas. Throughout the Dharma realms and the cosmic void, each 40. To set in motion the wheel of Dharma means proclaiming the doctrine of the Buddhas to the world. The Buddhas not only preach the good law, which releases all beings from the wheel of birth and death, samsara, but being channels or reservoirs of spiritual power, help mankind to overcome the power that binds one to samsara. They are thus saviors of mankind as well as teachers. 23. Dust mode respectively contains therein unutterable end. Innumerable vast Buddha lands, equal in number to the smallest dust motes. In each country well ineffable end. Innumerable Buddhas equal to the smallest dust motes in number. In each moment there are Buddhas, equal to the smallest dust motes in number, who are attaining in light. Enment, and each is surrounded by an ocean widesome. Blight of all Bodhisattvas. I constantly request such Buddhas 
to turn the wheel of right dharma. Thus, even though the space of the void has ended, and likewise the world of beings, the karmas of beings, and the sorrows of beings, all have ended, yet my request is endless. Thought succeeding. Thought without interruption, and in bodily, vocal, and mental deeds, without weariness. Again, O noble-minded man, what is meant by beseech? Ing the Buddha is to remain in the world? The Buddhas are infinite in number as the minutest dust motes of the ten quarters and three generations throughout the Dharma realms and cosmic void, and so are the Bodhisattvas, the Sravakas, the Pratyaka Buddhas, the Holy Learned Ones, the Partly Learned Ones, and the Well-Learned Layman. When they set their minds on the attainment of Nirvana, I entreat them all to remain in touch with mankind, instead. 24. Of entering Nirvana. 41. Even to the duration of Kulpas of Buddha lands, equal to the minutest dust motes in number, in order to benefit all living beings. Thus even, though the cosmic void has ended, and likewise the states of beings, the karmas of beings, and the sorrows of beings, though all such have an end, yet my petition to thee, Buddhas is endless. Thought succeeds thought without interruption, and in bodily, speech, and mental deeds. Without weariness. Again, O noble-minded man, what is meant by being under Buddha's guidance forever? It means, for instance, the Tathagata Varokana. 42 of the Sangha world. 43. Who from the beginning, when he made an earnest wish. 41. Nirvana is the abridged form of Parinirvana. 42. Tathagata Varokana, the name Varokana means the great sun which illuminates everywhere, i.e. the spiritual sun of righteousness which removes the darkness of ignorance, and illuminates the heart of man with spiritual grace. Here it is used to indicate the Buddha Gautama Sakyamuni, who was the vehicle for the power of Varokana. 43. The Sangha world means the world of tolerance of affliction, or the endurable world. This explanation is popular in China, but some say, Sahu refers to spiritual power. Since writing the above I find that Ita, in his Handbook of Chinese Buddhism supports the former explana. Tian. He gives the meaning as the world of suffering, or the capital of a chilio cosm. The inhabited portion of every universe, the island uni. Verses of modern science, including all persons subject to transmigra. Tian and needing a Buddha's instruction, and divided into three worlds. Trilakya, ruled by Saham Patti. 25. For obtaining Buddhahood, in order to deliver all beings. And having made the exquisite advance by unremittingly. Skillful exertion and sacrificed his lives and bodies, in unutterable and countless number, for the sake of alms. Giving. He stripped off his own skin for parchment, used his own blood for ink, and his bones for writing and strewing. Mens. Thus the scripture have been written in bulk as great as Mount Samuru. In appreciation of the Dharma, he would disregard the royal throne, dominions, palaces, gar, dens, and all that appertained to him. He spared no energy 
in his arduous career and painstaking, until he Akam. Pleashed the great Bodhi under the tree. 44. Then he dis. Played various exalted powers, Abhijanas. 45. Manifested. 44. The tree is the sacred Bodhi tree, Bodhi Druma, under which the Lord. Buddha Sakyamuna attained enlightenment and became a Buddha. 45. Abhijanas, or Abhijana, are the supernatural powers attained by the head of enli beings. They are, 1, Riddhi Sachakri Ya, the heavenly step, with a transmutable body which can travel throughout space without impeding. Ment, 2, Devyachachas, heavenly eye, giving sight without limitation of space and of time. 3. Divyasuritra, heavenly ear, that can hear all sounds, and understand all languages and voices. 4. Parachitajana, intuitive mind, knowing and understanding the thoughts of all beings. 5. Purvanivasanasam Ritajana, knowledge of previous existences of one self and all other beings. 6. Ashravakshaya, Knowledge of the stream of life and the exhaustion of worldly passions. The ordinary heavenly beings possess these powers with the exception of the sixth, the Ashravak Chaya, which is attainable only by the saints of the three vehicles. Buddhas and Bodhisattvas certainly possess supernatural powers not limb. I by these six, even the inhabitants of the Paradise Sioux Cavity possess more powers than the heavenly beings, see the larger Sukha Divayaha. 26. Various transmutations, revealed various Buddha fig. Years. 46. And presided at the various assemblies, such as the assemblies of great Bodhisattvas, the assemblies of Srava, Kas and Pratyaka Buddhas, the assemblies of the Chakra, Vardhya Raja, 47, and Petty Kings, 48, and their retinues, the assemblies of Kshatriya, 49, Brahmins, 50, Elders and Lay, 46, all Buddhas have the threefold embodiment, 1, the Dharmakaya, the body of law, which is the essential body omnipresent in all the uni. Versus, 2, the Samhokaya, the body of retribution, achieved through the merits cultivated during countless kalpas, and having its fixed abiding place, such places as the Western Paradise, etc., 3. The Nirmankya, the body of manifestation or revelation, which is often transformed into countless myriads of figures and types, in order to deliver the various beings according to their affinities, Nidhana. All personalities and quali ties of a Buddha and Bodhisattva, such as a golden body, encircling light, and miraculous powers, are called the bodily retribution, or principle. Retribution. These are not limited to those exalted beings, but belong also to all sentient beings who have both their bodily and abiding retribution. Tyans. For instance, a powerful brain and intellect are the bodily retribution. Tyans of mankind buildings and furnitures etc. are the man's abiding retry. Bushans, roosts, sites and the like, are the abiding retributions of animals. Horns, paws, tusks and claws are the animal's bodily retributions. 47. Chakravarti Rajas or the holy kings who turns the wheel. There are four grades of them, 
and they are the rulers of some worlds, but are not Buddhas and are perhaps even inferior to great Bodhisattvas. 48. The petty kings are also known as the kings of scattered corn. They are inferior to the wheel-turning kings. 49. Kshatriya At the time of the Lord Buddha Sakyamuni, the people of India were divided into four castes, the highest being the Brahmins or priests, the next the Kshatriya or warrior statesmen, the third was that of the Vaishya or merchant class, and the lowest the Sudra or common people. The last named were mostly of non-Aryan descent. 50. Brahman, refers to 49. 27. Men, the assemblies of Devas. 51. Nagas. 52. Eight groups. 53. Mankind, and subhuman. At these assemblies in Sanctuary. Aries, he spoke in a full and round voice of thunder, with expedient means and skillful methods, teaching the beings in a manner befitting their inclinations and happiness. Thus he led them to the maturity of Bodhi, until he entered into Nirvana. All these examples I will follow, not only that of the present world honored one Varokana, but of all they. 51. The Devas are the heavenly beings, gods, or angels. 52. The Nagas, a word meaning dragons, is applied to a certain class of deities of great wisdom. 53. These are supposed to be spiritual and powerful beings. 1. The Devas or the heavenly beings, whose bodies radiate light, and who dwell in the heavens as follows, the six karma heaven, heaven of desire, the sphere where lust still exists, next come the four rupatata heavens, heaven of ethereal form, which are superior to the six karma heavens, because the rupatata heavens are without sexual and dietetic desires, but every material convenience is of the great beauty and utmost excel. Lens, and the dwellers enjoy states of mental ecstasy. Next come they. Arupata to heavens, formless heavens, the worlds of pure abstract. Thought, where everything is without material form, the dwellers having. No body, but only feelings. The devas of all these heavens are certainly blessed ones, yet, they backslide into the evil orders when their merits are exhausted, unless they reach the ultimate goal of Buddhahood. 2. The Nagas 3. The Yakas or flying deities 4. The Gandhavas, who live on perfumes only, and are the musicians of the Indra the chief god. 5. The Asuras. 6. The Gandrudas or the golden-winged birds, the length between their wings is more than three million miles. They feed on drag. Ons. 7. The Kinaras, a horn-headed species in semi-human form. They are the singers of the Indra. 8. The Maharajas, a type of Naga deity with a large abdomen. All these eight groups are invisible to mankind. 28. Tathagatas of the Buddha countries, equal in number to the dust motes of the ten quarters and three yugas. Throughout the Dharma realms and cosmic void, I will fall. Lo the examples of the Buddhas from thought to thought. Even though the void of space has ended, and the worlds of beings, the karmas of beings, the sorrows of beings all have ended, yet my practice and following of the examples 
of the Buddhas will not be ended. Thought succeeds. Thought without interruption, and in bodily, vocal end. Mental deeds, without weariness. Again, O noble-minded man, what is meant by always in? Compliance with beings? It means always in harmony. With the beings of the worlds of ten quarters, throughout. The Dharma circles in cosmic void, they are known as the Beings to be born from the womb, from the egg, from voice. Tour, and produced by metamorphosis. They live in differ. And elements. 54. Either abiding on the earth, in the water. In the fire, that is heat, or in the wind, air. There are also. Some beings flying in the void, perching in forests and. Bushes. They are of various species, forms, lineaments. 54. Elements refers to the four great elements they are, earth, water, fire, heat, and wind, air. These are the fundamental ingredients of the universe. 29. Colors, length of life, appellations, natures, knowledge, habits, characteristics, manners, costumes, and diets. They dwell in innumerable abiding places, in towns, villages, cities, and palaces. They comprises the Devas, the Nagas, the eight groups. Human beings, subhumans, some have no feet, some two feet, some four feet, and other have many feet, some are with form, some without form, with sense, without sense, or neither with nor without sense. All of these should be accommodated and served by me, according to their needs and their natures, as attentively as I would show fill. Eel respect to my parents, do respect to my teachers, to elders and arhats. 55. Up to the Tathagatas, all inequality. I would be a good physician to the sick, a guide to those who have wandered from the path, setting their feet in the right way. I would be a light to those who wander in the darkness. I would enable the people in poverty to discover the vaults of treasure. A Bodhisattva should thus benefit all beings with equal treatment, and bestow his loving care on. 55. Refer to note 39. 30. All beings alike. And why? Because if a Bodhisattva serves all beings, that is equal to serving the Buddhas dutifully. 2. Hold all beings in high esteem, and render them respectful. Services, that is equal to reverencing and serving the Tathagatas. To make all beings happy, is to please all Tathagatas. And why? Because the great compassionate heart is the essence of Buddhahood. For the sake of, to live, erring, all beings, the Bodhisattva, develops great compass, Zion, and from the great compassion springs the Bodhi, heart, from the Bodhi heart comes the enlightenment. This is like unto the king of mighty trees. 56. Growing in the wilderness and barren desert, if it gets no water, it wills and dies, but, if its roots be well watered, we shall see it flourishing with full foliage, blossoming in its full efflores, scents, and bearing plentiful fruit. A King Bodhi Tree 57 Is Even thus, all beings are roots of the Bodhi Tree, they 
Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas are its fruits and its flowers. 56. The King of Mighty Trees The Bodhi tree is the greatest of trees. The term king is applied in Buddhist writings, to the greatest of its kind in every sphere of life. 57. Refer to note 56. 31. If, Bodhisattvas, apply the water of great compassion to all beings, who form its roots, the Bodhi tree will bloom with flowers, and bear the fruits of the wisdom of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And why? If Bodhisattvas apply the neck tar of great compassion to benefit all beings, they will attain the Anuttara Samayak Sambhadai. 58. Therefore they beings are essential to the Bodhi, for without them, there are no Bodhisattvas able to attain the supreme transcendent dental wisdom. Ponder O oh noble-minded man, on the truth. In this parable, look upon all beings with impartial mind and equality, thus will the great compassion be brought to the state of fullness and completion. To bestow the great compassion upon all beings, that is equal to serving the Tathagatas, to their satisfaction. My compassionate embrace of all beings shall never cease. Even though the space of the void has ended, the worlds of beings, the karmas of beings, and the sorrows of beings are all ended, yet, my boundless compassion is endless. And in bodily, vocal, and mental deeds, without weariness. 58. Anuttara Samayak Sambhadai is transcendental knowledge, the highest form of wisdom attained by the Buddhas. 32. Again, O noble-minded man, what signifies turning over all one's merits, to benefit all sentient beings? This means that all one's merits acquired from the commence meant of paying the highest homage to all Buddhas, and serving the needs of all beings, shall be transferred to all beings throughout the Dharma worlds and immeasurable spaces of the universe, wishing them to be happy and free from affliction or illness. All their evil projects will fail, and all their virtuous intentions will be quickly achieved. Close the door against evil, and open the right path of nirvana to men and devas. If the beings are suffering the most term, rival tortures in expiation of their accumulated evil doings, I will substitute myself and take upon myself the sufferings that their evil deeds have brought upon them, so shall they be released from evil deeds, and finally attain the Supreme Bodhi. Thus do all the Bodhisattvas devote them selves to the cultivation of virtue and merit, and turn the rewards over to the benefit of all beings. My loving embrace of all beings is eternal. Even though the void of space has ended, or the worlds of beings, or the Karmas of beings, or, the sorrows of beings all have ended, yet my compassion for all beings, by turning over. 33. My rewards of merit to them is endless. Thought succeeds. Thought without interruption, and in bodily, vocal, and mental deeds, without weariness. O oh, noble-minded man! such as the tenfold great vow of all bodhisattvas and mahasattvas, in completion. The bodhisattvas who achieve the performance of these vows will lead all beings to the fruition of bodhi and attain 
Mendavanatara Samaya Sambadai. He, whomsoever is a Bodhisattva, can fulfill the ocean of vows of Bodhisattva. Samantapadra, therefore, O noble minded man, thou shouldst comprehend the truth, and attain thereto. If a noble minded man or woman filled the incalculable Buddha spheres in unutterable and innumerable number, equal to the dust motes of the ten quarters, with the seven exquisite gems and with the highest joys of men and devas, offer all as gifts to the beings of all worlds, and offered they same in adoration to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of all worlds, and continued such offerings for a period of kalpas of Buddha countries, equal to the dust motes of the uni verse in number, and so produced great stores of merit. Yet such an offering would be infinitesimal, in Kampari. Sun with the merit acquired by one who has only listened. 34. To the very king of vows. 59. The measure of the stock of merit of the former one, would not equal one hundredth part, of the latter, nay, not one thousandth part, even not to an upanasandth part of the merit, of the latter. 60. Again, whosoever has profound faith in this great vow, and will accept, recite, or write, even one gatha. 61. Of four lines. Only, such will quickly expiate the five deadly sins. 62. And all. Physical illness, or mental anguish, and afflictions of the mundane world, even his sinful deeds equal to the dust. Motes of all Buddha lands in number, will all be blotted out. All malignant forces, Yakas. 63. Raksasas. 64. Kumhandas. 65. Paisakas. 66. Buddhas. 67. Vampires, the bloodsuckers, and 59. The king of vows refers to the vows of Samantapadra. For the mean. King of king refer to note 56. 60. Upanishad. Refer to note 29. 61. Gatha is a hymn or verse, the versified part of the Buddhist scriptures. 62. The five deadly sins, Panchanantariyani, are patricide, madricide, setting. The Buddha order in discord, killing an arhat, and causing blood to flow. From the body of a Buddha. The last term I believe being a metaphor of destroying the pictures, images etc. which represent the Buddhas. 63. The Yakas are evil flying spirits. 64. The Rakasas are nocturnal demons of malignant nature. 65. Kubhandas are demons of gluttony, with bodies like big jars, kumhai, which incite men to greed and lust. 66. Paisakas are mad ghosts. 35. Cannibals, all such evil spirits will keep afar from him, or even willingly protect him, by acting as his tutelary gods. Therefore, he who recites these vows will have no obstacle. Class, to impede his progress, wherever he goes in the world, as the moon comes out from the hazy clouds. Praised by Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, he will be honored by men and devas, and adored by all beings. This noble minded man is well incarnated in a human body, and has brought to perfection all the merits and virtues of 
Bodhisattva Samantapadra. He will soon become like thee. Bodhisattva Samantapadra, with the glorious body of bliss, resplendent with the thirty-two attributes. 68. Of a hero. If he be born in the Deva or human worlds, such a one will always be born into most noble class, and he will destroy all evil influences, and keep away from wicked friends. He will be free from all passions, he will conquer the men of wrong doctrines, he will be like unto the king of lions, able to subdue all animals, he deserves to receive gifts from all beings. Again, when such a person comes to die, and at the last. Kaysana 69 Moment, approaches death, all his sense organs. 67 Buddhas are ghosts of self-created birth, or created from metamorphosis. 68 For the 32 attributes or signs of a great one, please refer to Buddhist. Dictionary 36 Perish, all kinsmen and relatives are abandoned, all in flow. Incense are lost, his state ministers and courtiers are departed, trappings of the inner or outer palaces, eel, fans and horses, carriages, jewels and the treasure. Repositories, all such are left behind. However, the king of vows will be his sole companion, and will forsake him. Not, but at all times will go before him and lead him to Sue Cavity. 70. The world of highest happiness, the land of Buddha Amitabha. In a case Anna, having already reached that Buddha land and been reborn there, Upon his arrival he sees the Buddha. Amitabha. 71. Surrounded by the Bodhisattvas Manjasri. 72. 69. Kesana is a moment in time, the twinkling of an eye, a moment of thought. 70. Sukhavati is a western paradise, or pure land, of the Buddha Amitabha known as the most happy world. For a description see the smaller Sukhavati Vaiha and the large Sukhavati Vaiha translated by Max Miller, especially in the Amitavudhyana Sutra translated by J. Takakusu, all of these contained in Sacred Books of the East Volume. 49, Oxford University Press 71. The Buddha Amitabha is the lord of the western paradise or the most happy world, Sukhavati. He was formerly the Pikadharmakara. Prior to the time of prehistoric kulpas, of our world, and on a world long since vanished, he made forty-eight vows for delivering all beings to his prospective Buddha land which he realized ten kulpas ago and is now known as the most happy world. Amit means boundless, Abha means light or splendor. He is also called the Buddha Amitayur, which means endless life. The life of this Buddha and the lives of the people in that country are eternal. Therefore he is named Amitayus. 37. Samantapadra, Avalakitesvara. 73. Maitreya. 74. And others. These are of magnificent form and noble appearance, and are perfected with all virtues and merits. While the man, the vower, finds himself born from the Lotus Flower 75 and favored by the Buddha with the Pre 72 
Manjushri is one of the two principal bodhisattvas, who are the Sabordi. Natis of the Buddha Sakyamuni, the other is Bodhisattva Samanta. Bhadra. Manjushri represents the principle of universal wisdom, as Samanta Bhadra represents that of universal love. 73. Alvalokitesvara is one of the two principal bodhisattvas of the Western Paradise or the Pure Land, Su Kavati, the other being Mahasthama, the mightiest one. Avalokitesvara is the figure best known and most pleasing to the people in general in China and Japan. In some cases, he appeared in the form of a female bodhisattva, and therefore he has been misunderstood by the people as being a goddess. Account is given in the famous 24 th chapter of the Sadharma Pandarika, Lotus of the Pure Law, in the volume 21 of the Sacred Books of the East. 74. Maitreya, also named the Bodhisattva Ashaiva, is the future Buddha of our Sava world, and is to come when Buddhism has perished in this world. As told by Buddha Sakyamuna in the Maitreya Vyakarana Sutra, the existence of Buddhism in this world is divided into three periods, which began with the Buddha Sakyamuna as follows. 1. The Law of Origin Taught by Buddha Sakyamuna and his successors, which ended after 500 years 2. The Law of Reproduction, taught through images and books only, which lasted 1000 years 3. The Law of Finality, which will carry forward for 10,000 years, then decline to the point of zero At that time a renaissance of Buddhism will be caused by the Bodhisattva Maitreya. At present, we Buddhists are under the period of final law. 75. Lotus is the symbolic flower of Buddhism, especially in the Pure Land. Su Cavity, where the holy beings are springing into existence by Aper. I shall birth from these flowers, to whom parentage and sexual difference. Tietitian are unknown. 38. Diction, Vyakarana. 76. Of attaining Buddhahood in the future. After having received the Vyakarana, he will pour out the power of his wisdom to benefit all beings according to their faith or the strength of their mind. Such deeds shall be performed throughout the ten quarters of infinite and innumerable worlds. Soon he will be sitting in the Bodhi Mandala. 77. Quelling The Forces of Maras 78. Attaining Enlightenment and Rotate In the Wondrous Wheel of Dharma So will he enable thee. 76. Prediction, Vyakarana, is the term applied to the prophecy of a future Buddha in long ages to come, and will be called by the name of a certain Tathagata, a personal name symbolizing the character of the Buddha. The prediction of Buddhahood is a great event for the followers of Buddha, because their achievement is therefore assured. Vyakarana must not be confused with predestination, for the law predestines no one, and Buddhahood is attainable only by one's own effort, no others can for ordinate him. Even Buddhas cannot predestine anyone. But Buddha can foresee certain events and foretell them. This is one reason why Buddhism is more open than all other religions of the world. 77. Bodhi Mandala is somewhat like a conclave of divine beings, which 
unites to carry out some definite object, such as a meeting held where the precepts are to be given, not an ordination. Here it means the plat form of Bodhi, or the plat form of Dharma, where all the Bodhisattvas sit down when about to become Buddhas. 78. Maras are powerful evil spirits, but the word is used generally in its meaning of the evil power which invades the mind of men, and which can be expelled only by mind control and strengthened by the power of Bodhi on which to draw. Meditation empowers the mind to overcome the force of Mara. 39. Innumerable worlds of Buddha lands, in number as they infinitesimal dust motes, to direct their minds towards the attainment of Bodhi, according to their ability and nature, being brought to maturity thereby. And so he will continue such doings, throughout coming kulpas, and thus widely benefit all beings. O noble-minded man, whosoever of the multitude has awakened faith on hearing this great king of vows, observes, reads, recites, and widely preaches it to others. The merits produced thereby, none but the Buddha can esti. Mate. Therefore, you should allow no doubts to cloud your minds on hearing this king of vows, but carefully accept. Read, recite, and put the teaching into actual practice, and publish it to others. Such persons will attain to the fulfill meant of this vow by a single thought, and their accumula. Tyan of bliss acquired therefrom is boundless. It can deliver all beings from the great ocean of pain and sorrow, and ensure their rebirth in the paradise of Buddha Amitabha. Thereupon, the Bodhisattvas Mahasattva Samantapadra, in confirmation of this truth, turning around to the ten quarters, uttered the following stanzas. 40. 1. I worship all the lions among men. 79. Of the worlds. Of the ten quarters and three yugas. With my pure body, speech, and mind, I do homage to them all. Without exception. 2. By the divine power of the merits and vows of Bodhisattva Samantapidra, I manifest myself before all Tathagatas. From my original body emanate into a mirable bodies, and with each of my bodies I do hum. Age to the innumerable bodies, and with each of my bodies I do homage to the innumerable Buddhas. Simultaneously. 3. I deeply believe that in a grain of dust there exist countless Buddhas and assemblies of Bodhisattvas. Likewise, that the dust in boundless circles of the Dharma are filled with Buddhas. 4. Emitting from the ocean-like infinity all voices, with the wondrous speeches I praise the profound merits and virtues of Buddhas and, continue to do so, through all eons in the future. 79. The lions among men, or human lions. The latter sounds strange in English, but may perhaps be better translated as lion-hearted men. But the text makes no mention of the word heart, so I translate it litter. Ally. Human lions refers to men of great valor who break the wheel of birth and death, attaining the eternal freedom in transcendental Wisconsin. Dominican. Here it indicates Buddhas. 41. 5. I present to Thagadas with the best gifts of flowery canopies, banners, garlands, 
fragrant ointments, and music. 6. Again, I offer to Tathagatas the best garments, incenses, lamps, and candles, in an assemblage as high as Mount Samaru. 7. Through my wise understanding and high inspiration, I have profound faith in all Buddhas of the three Yugas. By the power of the merits and vows of Bodhisattva Samantapidra, I adore and serve all Tathagatas without omission. 8. The various wickednesses I committed in the past are derived from time without beginning, and through avarice, hatred, and from infatuation of bodily actions, speech, and thoughts, I now repent and abstain from them all. 9. Any merit or virtue of all Tathagatas or the Bodhi Sattvas, the thoroughly learned ones, and the partly learned one of the two vehicles, both are the Hini and a school. 80. Even of the ordinary beings of the ten quarters, I approve all and am pleased with. 42. 10. Those pioneers of Bodhi, and the brilliant ones who are to be likened unto a lamp illuminating the worlds. Of the ten quarters and three yugas, I request them to turn the wondrous wheel of the Dharma. 11. When the Buddhas set their minds on the attainment of Nirvana, I earnestly entreat them to remain in the worlds for the duration of boundless kalpas, in order to benefit and delight all beings. 12. All the treasures of merit and roots of goodness, pro. Duce from the tenfold aspiration of Samantha. 80. Hinayana school is the ancient form of Buddhism. The name signifies small vehicle as contrasted with the Mahayana or great vehicle. Hinayana commences with the Sravakas, leading upwards to Arhatship. Its dogmas are the Four Noble Truths, Katvari Ariyasadhyani, which range as follows, 1, Dukkha or Suffering, which is the concomitant of sentient beings and is unavoidable to any physical body. 2, Samudai or Accumulation which means that the sufferings are accumulated and intensified by the passions. 3, Naraha or the Extinction of passions. 4. Marga or the path which leads to the extinction of passions. Also the twelve nidana, the twelve links in the chain of conditioned existence. They are, 1. Ignorance, 2. Formation, 3. Consciousness, 4. Mental and physical, 5. Six sense object realms. 6. Contact, 7. Sensation, 8. Craving, 9. Clinging, 10. Becoming, 11. Birth, 12. Old age and death. Refer to Buddhist dictionary for detailed explanation on dependent origination. This analysis helped us to understand the riddle of life and death, and to understand the empty ness of existence. Therefore, all beings should seek the path which puts an end to birth and death and attain the final parinirvana. The final goal of Hinayana is the obtaining of arhatship, or becoming a pratyeka Buddha, whereas the aim of the Mahayana or Bodhisattva is obtaining enlightenment for all sentient beings. It is because of this that the Hina Yana is called the small vehicle and the Mahayana the big vehicle. 43. Bhadra, I shall turn over to all beings in their favor. And in Buddhahood. 13. 
I follow the ways of the Tathagatas, and elaborate the merits of Bodhisattva Samantha Pudra in completion. Making offerings out of veneration for the Tathagatas. In the ten quarters and of the three generations. 14. I desire to carry out the principles of the teachers of Devas and men. 81. To their satisfaction, and I train myself by studying their teachings and quickly reach the goal of great Bodhi. 15. The Buddha countries of the ten quarters are vast, pure and magnificent. There the Tathagatas are Sir, rounded by various assemblies, respectively under each Bodhi tree, the king of trees. 81. The teacher of Devas and men is one of the ten appellations of the Buddhas. The other nine are Tathagata, or he who has come to such Ness, Arham, or he who is deserving to be adored by Devas and men. Samsiksam Buddha, or he who has a perfect knowledge of all supernat. Bural power, Sagata or the charioteer who possesses all the wisdom and completes the Eightfold Truth, thus entering into Nirvana, Lokavit, or he who knows the world, Anuttara, or he who is the highest one with Thouta Superior, Purasadam Yasaradan, or the Great Tamer of Men, and Lokajiestha, or the World Honored One. 44. 16. I wish that the beings in the ten quarters may be free from passions and afflictions and be always happy. May they acquire the deep profit of the right dharma. May they tear out the passions even to the very root. 17. When I strove for the attainment of Bodhi, I was able to gain the Purvanivasanusam Riddhi Oinana. 82. Supernilla. Mal power of remembering previous lives and karmas. In all worlds wheresoever I was born, and during each of my pre existences I attained the same knowledge. Always I joined the order, observed the pure precepts. Strictly, without stain or leakage, Anis Rabba. 83. 82. Purvanivasanu is having the supernormal knowledge of all forms of pre existence of oneself and others, this being one of the six supernormal powers. Stanza number 17 refers to the fact that the Bodhisattva has the power of remembering his previous lives, in metempsychosis, in all the six realms of existence i.e. Deva, God, Realm, Human Realm, Asura Realm, Animal Realm, Hungry Ghost Realm and Hell Realm Doubtless Many readers will say in surprise how can an exalted being such as a Bodhisattva fall into such as the lower realms, the Animal, Hungry Ghost or Hell Realm to this the answer is that ordinary beings fall into such evil states by the karma of their past evil deeds, but a bodhisattva enters such states by his own free will, and in order to deliver those beings from the lower states of existence, he would be reborn into one of those lower realms and stay close in touch with them. An example is the Bodhisattva K. Shipgratha, the Bodhisattva of the treasure chamber of the earth, is well known for his liberation of sentient beings from hell. 83. Anisrava means a deed without leakage, any meritorious act without selfishness is called without leakage. For example, he who performs a Noble deed with an expectation of worldly reward cannot attain the Bodhi by it, but reaps what he sowed as a siphon transfers liquid from 
one vessel to another. 45. 18. There are Devas, Nagas, Yakas, Kumandas, men, and subhumans etc., to whom I preach the law, by using various voices befitted to their native languages. 19. Diligently cultivating the pure Patamitas, I forget not the Bodhi heart, annihilating hindrances and defile. Mets without exception, I achieved all the marvelous merits. 20. I am able to free myself from worldly life and the environment of Maras, just as the lotus flower shoots up from the water, but is not wetted thereby, and is. The sun and moon appear in the void, but abide not in it. 21. I relieve the distress of the beings of all evil realms and equally bestow happiness on them. I continue to do so throughout the lapse of boundless kulpas and in the extent of the ten quarters of the universe. The benefits for all are eternal and omnipresent. 22. I will always be harmonious to the beings and render them aid, and will continue such doings throughout all coming kulpas, and I will cherish the great merits. 46. Of Samantapidra, and perfect the supreme great Bodhi thereby. 23. All my fellow devotees shall be gathered together from all parts. Our bodily, speech, mental deeds are equivalent to one another. We study the same doc. Try and vows together. 24. Any well-learned man, who shows me the practice of the vows of Samantapidra, thus benefits me. I wish always to be in his company. May he be pleased with me. 25. I desire to see the Tathagatas often, and also their ret. Inyo, the sons of Jina. 84. I will make vast offerings of veneration to them in all coming kulpas without ces. Sation or indolence. 26. I desire to magnify and expand all the activities of Bodhi, by applying the wondrous Dharma of Buddhas, perfecting the pure doctrine of Samanta, Bhadra by studying and practicing it throughout all the coming kulpas. 84. The sons of Jina, Jinadhara, are the heirs to the doctrine of the Buddhas, viz. Bodhisattvas. 47. 27. Among all the beings, or Sarvastivada. 85. I will call to make merits and wisdom boundlessly. Thereby I will gain a never exhausting store of samadhi. 86. Prujna. 87. Yupaya. 88. And Multi Moksa. 89. 28. A single grain of dust contains therein the incalculable countries. 90. In each country dwell incalculable Buddhas, each Buddha is surrounded by many asam. Please. I see them constantly performing the practice of. Bodhi. 85. Sarastavada is the school which discusses the existence and reality of all visible phenomena. It is the reverse of nihilism or voidness. How? Ever, it is unlikely to have that meaning as it is used in this verse. Because the word used in this verse, in the Chinese version, means 
existence only. Some say existence means the lives of the various beings. 86. Samadhi is an undisturbed state of mind, or concentrated equanimity. 87. Prajna is transcendental wisdom, divine intuition, one of the six Pahamitas. Refers to number 10. 88. Yupaya means a device or expedient. The Bodhisattvas used every method their all embracing love could devise to instruct humanity and remove the sorrows of existence. 89. Multimoksa means emancipation, or deliverance from bondage. 90. To understand this verse, one should refer to note number 20, and under. Stand that, as modern science is now explaining to us, there is a universe in an atom. Yet the, physical, atom is a manifestation of still more one. Durful life, it is a crystallization of super-physical forces, usually termed etheric. A grain of dust, then, contains innumerable universes, stretching back in their ultimate origin to super-physical worlds, having their origin in ultimate reality, the Buddha worlds. 48. 29. Throughout the ocean-like system of worlds, and the ocean-like gathering of the Buddhas of the Tenkwar Ters, whereof each hair point. 91. Appears an ocean-like system of the three yugas. I will cultivate my merit by passing through all these oceans, and continue to do so, for the period of an ocean of kulpas. 30. The speeches of all Tathagatas are pure and clear. Each word comprises the ocean of all voices, and respectively swelling the ocean of the orations of Buddhas. In order to preach the Dharma for the beings according to their understanding and pleasure, the various forms of speech are applied. 31. All the Tathagatas of the Three Ages possess the ocean of everlasting speech, and constantly rotate the wheel of the wonderful meaning of truth. Such I thoroughly fathomed by my profound wisdom. 32. I can clearly behold the state of the future, and calm bind all coming kulpas into a single thought. I peen trade all the kulpas of the three ages thoroughly in a mental flash of vision. 91. A hair point means an infinitesimally small unit of matter. A reference to the preceding explanation refers to number 90 will help in the under standing of this. 49. 33. I can foresee the three ages by one thought. Those who are called lion among men also can enter the Buddha state, as it were in a phantasm or vision, and that power enables them to reach the stage of Eman. Sipation. 34. From the smallest breadth as that of the point of a hair. 92. Come forth the magnificent and holy countries of the three yugas. I penetrate deeply all the innumer, able, magnificent and pure countries of the hair. Points of the ten quarters. 35. I come into contact with those who shall be the light of the world in the future, who will be enlightened, and will turn the wheel of Dharma to awaken all beings. They will enter into Nirvana after having perfected their Buddha works, with all of these I will be friendly. 36. May I possess the following powers. 
93. The power of Abhijana which goes over every part of the world. 92. A thoughtful consideration of NOS 9 and 90 will help the reader in under. Standing this paragraph. All our efforts made to express the transcendent tall nature of the Buddha worlds and the profundity of the teaching. 93. Here the text makes no mention as to who possesses these powers, NEI. Thir does it indicate how one is to acquire them. With the view to come. Plotting the sense of this verse, the translator has taken the liberty of at ing the words in parenthesis, but does not guarantee that the added words correctly represent the meaning. 50. With supernormal speed, the power of Mahayana, which penetrates the universal gate of all directions, the power of merits and virtues which is wisely and widely cultivated, and power of great compassion, which shelters all who come for that refuge through the divinity and grace of the Buddhas. 37. Again, the power of blessing dignifies and purifies every part of the world. The power of wisdom is independent, is attached to nothing, and abides nowhere. The power of concentrated immobility of meditation, samadhi, wisdom, prajna, and expedi. And means, yupaya, are endowed with supernormal might. The power of bodhi is in the positive and acu mulative nature, throughout every part. 38. Also, the power of purity refines all meritorious deeds. The power of destruction destroys all passions. Cleases. The power of conquest subdues all maras. The power of fulfillment perfects the merits of Samantapidra. 39. I wish to extend my power in the following direct times, may I be able to purify and embellish the ocean of all the worlds. May I emancipate all beings from the 51. Ocean, of life and death. 94. May I be able to discern the ocean of various dharmas. May I be able to enter deeply into the ocean of wisdom. 40. Also, may I be able to purify the ocean of all calm. Duct. May I fulfill the ocean of all wishes in perfection. May I be in close touch with, and serve, the ocean of Buddhas. Shall I cultivate and cherish the principle without weariness, through the duration of an ocean of Kulpas? 41. All the Tathagatas of the three Yugas have their exalted activities and vows of Bodhi, which I fully Practice in their adoration as my offerings. I shall be enlightened by the conduct of Samantapidra. 94. The ocean of birth and death, samsara. The existence of a human being or an animal in any one of the various phenomenal worlds is like a ceaselessly revolving wheel, a circle of continuous metempsychosis. Under karmic law, for example, when one dies, his spirit may be reborn in the body of a sheep or other animal, owing to his evil deeds, or may be exalted to an angelic life in the heavenly world through his meritorious deeds. Thus the life never ceases, only the form changes. Even the devas of the heavens cannot escape from birth and death, unless they attain Buddhahood. From the enlightened eyes of the Buddha, 
is continuous. Existence is nothing but suffering and misery, and it is extremely difficult to escape from it, on account of the concatenation of causes and effects, which sentient beings are ever weaving by their actions. They themselves make their next, or rather their endless continuation of life. There is no other creator than themselves, see the Buddha Vasudha Dasa Parikar. Mamara Sutra The fundamental teaching of Buddhism instructs us in how to escape forever from samsara, the ocean of birth and death. 52. 42. All the Tathagatas have their eldest son, of the Dharma, whose name is Samantapadra. I now turn all my good roots towards the attainment of wisdom and behavior, may I be tantamount to the Bodhisattva. Samantapadra in all his qualities. 43. I wish that my body, speech and thoughts always be pure, and that the behavior of others of the various worlds may be the same. Whosoever possesses such wisdom is entitled Samantapadra. I wish that I shall be equivalent to him in every quality. 44. For the purpose of purifying all my virtues of Samanta, Bhadra, and the great vows of Manjasri, may I fulfill all those duties to the uttermost without any omis. Zion. May I continue my task through the coming Kulpas without weariness. 45. My cultivation of merit is boundless, therefore have I acquired boundless good deeds. I aside myself in the boundless virtues, and attain the high understand. Ing of all supernormal powers. 46. I now turn over my accumulated virtues towards the attainment of the brave, or sharp, advance of. 53. Manjasri, and the wise conduct of Samantapadra. May I follow the ways of them and study ceaselessly. 47. I now devote my merits on the expectation of gaining the most excellent conduct of Samantapadra. Such great vows will be praised by the Buddhas of the three generations. 48. I wish that at the approach of death I may annihilate all hindrances, thus I may be able to see the Buddha Amitabha face to face, so that with his aid, I may go and be reborn in his peaceful and happy world. 49. Upon my rebirth in that world, I shall actually fulfill my great aim, realize my every wish without any omis, Zion, and offer the benefits and happiness to all beings. 50. The members of the assembly of that Buddha are pure and holy. Even so am I, springing into existence by apparitional birth from the pure and holy flower of the lotus, and seeing face to face the Tathagata of Infi. Night Splendor 95. In his presence, I shall receive assurance of my destiny to attain Bodhi, namely Vyakarana, i.e. the Buddha announces that so and so will become a Buddha at such and such a time. 95. The Tathagata of Infinite Splendor, i.e. the Buddha Amitabha. 54. 51. When I have been favored by that Tathagata with the prediction, then I reveal myself by transformation into incalculable bodies of myriad of kodis in number, being possessed of great power and wisdom extending over the ten quarters, in order to benefit 
the various beings in all worlds. 52. When the infinitude of the universe comes to an end, beings and their karmas and passions all are ended. Nevertheless, my vows of aspiration are ultimately and solely endless. 53. He who offers the precious gifts, produced from the boundless countries of the ten quarters, in honor of Tathagatas, and offers the best enjoyments to the Devas and human beings, for a duration of kulpas, equal in number to the finest atoms of dust composing all the worlds, make merits beyond computation. 54. On the other hand, he who upon hearing of this king of unique vows, and thus being awakened to faith, with the intention of seeking the wonderful Bodhi in fervent aspiration, will acquires merits in cons, quens thereof which are still greater than the former one. 55. 55. Thus he will keep afar from wicked advisers, and never sink into any of the evil realms. 96. Moreover, he will soon see the Tathagata of infinite light. 97. These are all the results of the wonderful vows of Samantapidra. 56. Such a person will easily be born in the human world and enjoy an excellent life of longevity. 98. He will soon attain the Bodhisattvahood of Samantapidra. 57. In past times, owing to the lack of wisdom, I have committed the most wicked five deadly sins, Panch and Arya. These will be expiated in a moment of thought by reciting this great king of vows of Samantapidra. 58. If he wishes to be born in the human or deva worlds, he is certain to be a member of the highest race, per affecting with noble lineaments and wisdom. No ene, mice of other religions or maras, can subdue him. 96. Evil realms, the three evil realms are the animal realm, the hungry, ghost realm, and the hell realm. 97. Tathagata of infinite light, i.e. the Buddha Amitabha. 98. He who will be born in the human world and has an excellent life. Means, if he so desires to be born in the human world he will attain. Longevity. In its wider sense it means that if he has performed the vows, he has used his life well, has taken full advantage of being a human, and has not wasted his human life, for only human beings can obtain the fruit. I should of these vows, animals cannot. 56. Moreover, he is worthy to be adored by the triple worlds. 99. 59. Hasten to the king of great trees, the tree of Bodhi. Sitting there, subdue the Maras. Attain enlightenment. And turn the wheel of Dharma, in order to benefit all sentient beings. 60. If there be anyone who observes, recites, and preaches the vows of Samantapidra, the result thereof none is able to estimate, except the Buddhas. He infallibly will attain the supremacy of Bodhi. 61. Whosoever recites the vows of Samantapidra, I affirm that, having planted good roots, at least they will bring every quality of Dharma into completion by a single thought and finally will be able to deliver the beings 
so as to fulfill his pure vows. 62. My practice of the unique vows of Saman Tapadra, from which boundless and marvelous blessedness is. 99. The triple worlds, Trilokya, are firstly Kamadatu the world of appetites and sensual desires. These refer to our mundane world and include the heavens. Secondly, Rupadatu the world of material excel. Lens, but without sexual and dietetic desires, and thus superior to the Kamadatu, and thirdly the Arupadatu which are superlative and formless heavens. 57. Produced, are all to be turned over to the beings who are deeply sunken into the sea of pain and sorrows, or of birth and death, wishing them all to be to live. Erd, I pray that they may soon attain to the country of the Buddha of infinite splendor. When the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Samantapadra had concluded his great oration on the great king of vows, and had recited the pure Gathas before the Tathagata, the Kumara Sathana was overwhelmed with joy, and all the Bodhisattvas enraptured with ecstasy. The Tathagata applauded, excellent, excellent. At the assembly where this inconceivable state of immensity, patient and exalted Dharma was proclaimed, there were present the world honored one and a great company of the saints, Bodhisattvas and Mahasattvas, with the Bodhi Sattva Manjusri at the head of the assembly. The great Bodhisattvas with their fully trained 6,000 Hikas 100 were led by the Bodhisattvas made Reya. All the great Bodhisattvas of the Vajrakulpa 101 were led by the Bodhisattva Vimala Saman Tapadra. 102. The Akajati Pratyeka. 58. Buddhas. 103. Who are in the stage of Murdhati Kakata. 104. And the great Bodhisattvas and others of the ten quarters of the various worlds. All were present in this Kongriga. Tyan. Great and exalted beings of the ocean of worlds equal. In number to the smallest dust motes of all the worlds, all. These were led by the great wise one Sariputra. 105. And by. The Mahamagalyayana. 106. There were present also they. 100. Hiko is an official member of the Buddhist order, Sangha, who keeps the full precepts, and whose life is governed by 250 rules. The Hiko relies for his sustenance upon the gifts of the lay disciples, not being allowed to possess money or property. 101. Bhadrakulpa means the Kulpa era, of the sages, during which period a thousand Buddhas appear on earth. We are still living in this Kulpa, so it is referred to as the present Bhadrakulpa. This Kulpa is to last 236 million years, but over 150 million years have already elapsed. 102. Vimala Samantapadra, Vimala means pure, undefiled. The reference to this Bodhisattva is unknown to the translator. 103. Ikajati Pratibuddhas are Bodhisattvas who, from the first stage of their turning towards Buddhahood, have attained the pure Bodhi heart. Thereupon they acquire boundless samadhi, immobility of meditation and Dharani, mystic powers, and thereby arrive at the ten stages in 
succession and become Buddha elects. The old traditional explanation of the Akajati Pratibuddhas was that they would attain Buddhahood in their next life, but this has denied by some prominent Buddhists. How? Ever, I include it herein with reservation. 104. Murdhavi Shikta, is the sprinkling of the top of the head with water, a ceremony of Buddhist baptism. 105. Sariputra, known as the wisest disciple of Buddha Sakyamuni. 106. Mokalyayana, known as the most advanced in occult powers, whose position was similar to that of Sariputra. 59. Great Sravakas, Devas, rulers of the worlds. 107. The Nagas, the Yakas, Gandharvas, Asuras, Garudas, Kinaras, and Maharagas, human and subhuman. And the whole multitude on hearing the discourse of the Buddha were inspired with great joy to faithful observance of the vows. Here ends the vows of Samantapadra. 107. The rulers of the worlds are the heavenly kings. 60. The aspiration of Bodhisattva. Samantapadra. With purity of body, speech, and mind. I bow to all the heroic Buddhas of the past, present, and future. Without exception in every world in all the ten directions. By the power of this aspiration of Samantapadra. I bow with as many bodies as there are atoms in the pure lands. Of all those victorious Buddhas manifest in my mind, and. I pay homage to all of them. I conceive the entire realm of truth to be completely filled with enlightened ones. On each atom I imagine there to be as many Buddhas as atoms in the pure lands. Each Buddha surrounded by many Bodhisattvas. I honor all these blissful lords, praising their perfection with all the sounds of an ocean of varied melodies, an ocean of endless praise. I offer to those heroic Buddhas the finest flowers, garlands, music, and ointments, excellent canopies, choice lamps, and the best incense. I offer as well to those victorious ones the finest array of all excellent things, the finest robes and fragrances, and heaps of sweet-smelling powders as high as Mount Meru. 61. By the power of my faith in the deeds of Samantapadra, I prostrate and present vast and unequaled offerings to each of the victorious Buddhas. I confess every type of wrong that I have done in thought, word, or deed, under the influence of desire, anger, or ignorance. I rejoice in the meritorious deeds of all Buddhas of the Ten Directions. The Bodhisattvas, Pratyeka Buddhas, Arhats, practitioners, and all sentient beings. I request the enlightened protectors who have attained the detachment of Buddhahood and illuminated the worlds of the ten directions to turn the peerless wheel of Dharma. With folded hands, I beseech those who intend to manifest the final nirvana to remain for as many eons as there are atoms in all the pure lands for the benefit and happiness of all living beings. May whatever small amount of virtue I may have gained from prostrating, offering, confessing, rejoicing, requesting, and beseeching be dedicated to attaining perfect enlightenment. May I worship the Buddhas of the past and those now present in the worlds of the Ten Directions. May those to come quickly to fulfill their aspiration 
and reach Buddhahood by traversing the stages of enlightenment. 62. May all the worlds of the ten directions become pure and filled with bodhisattvas and victorious Buddhas who proceed to the royal tree of enlightenment. May all living beings in the ten directions always be happy and free of sickness. May the display of the Dharma be in harmony with the needs of all living beings and fulfill their hopes. May I perform all the deeds of enlightenment and remember all my lives in all states of existence and in all my lives after death, migration and rebirth. May I always embrace spiritual life. May I follow all the victorious Buddhas and perfect all the deeds of Samantapadra. Pure in the immaculate deeds of morality. May my conduct always be flawless and without fault. May I teach the Dharma in every tongue. In whatever sounds are understood by living beings. In the language of the gods, nagas, demons, spirits and human beings. May I always diligently and patiently perform the perfection. May I never disregard my intention to attain enlightenment and completely remove whatever faults may obscure it. Freed from karma, defilement and actions of demons. As a lotus is unsoiled by the mire. So in every rebirth in the world. May I proceed unhindered. Like the sun and moon in the clear sky. 63. Throughout all the lands in all the directions. May the sufferings of the lower realms be completely relieved. Establishing beings in happiness. May I work for the benefit of all living beings. Fully accomplishing the activities of enlightenment. May I work in harmony with the activities of all beings. May I practice and demonstrate the deeds of Samantapadra throughout all future eons. May I associate with those whose activities are similar to mine. May we act alike in thought, word and deed. And may our aspirations be as one. May those friends who wish to help me and also demonstrate the deeds of Samantapadra always meet me again and may I never cause them pain. May I always personally behold the victorious Buddhas those guardians surrounded by bodhisattvas and without tiring in all future eons. May I always present the magnificent offerings. May I always uphold the Buddha sacred Dharma and illuminate the deeds of enlightenment. May I train in the practice of Samantapadra in all future eons, through rebirth in all states of existence. May I gather endless stores of merit and wisdom. May I become an inexhaustible treasure of all virtues of method, wisdom, concentration and liberation. 64. May I always behold as many pure lands as there are atoms present in each pure land with inconceivable Buddha sitting in the midst of their bodhisattvas and performing the activities of enlightenment. In this way may I be able to see everywhere even on every mode of dust countless Buddhas of the past, present and future limitless pure lands and endless eons. May I always heed the pure speech of the victorious Buddhas, which holds within each word the totality of the perfect Dharma and an ocean of words and languages precisely suited to the needs of all living beings. May I possess perfect intelligence so as to heed the endless melody of speech when the victorious Buddhas of the past, present, and future turn the wheel of Dharma. May I accomplish the Bodhisattva's practice of entering the past, present, and future in a fraction of a second. 
May I enter all the future eons in a single instant. May I behold all the heroic Buddhas of the past, present, and future in a single instant. May I always perform their activities through the power of liberation from illusion. 65. May I perceive upon a single atom the perfect design of the pure realms of the past, present, and future. Thus may I enter into the realms of the victorious Buddhas in all directions. May the illuminators of the worlds of the future realize the stage of Buddhahood, of turning the wheel, and of the profound peace of Nirvana, and may I always be in their presence. May I acquire the perfectly accomplished powers of enlightenment, the power of miraculous swiftness, the power of perfection of every spiritual path, and the power of all virtuous qualities. May I acquire the power of all pervasive love, the power of the merit of every virtue, the power of all transcendental wisdom, and the powers of perfect knowledge, method, and meditation. May the power of action be utterly purified, the power of passions utterly subdued, the power of demons utterly destroyed, and the power of the deeds of Samantapidra perfected. May the ocean of lands be purified, the ocean of beings liberated, the ocean of Dharma realized, and the ocean of wisdom fully attained. 66. May the ocean of practice be purified and the oceans of aspirations accomplished. May the oceans of Buddhas be ceaselessly worshipped and the deeds of enlightenment tirelessly performed. May I completely fulfill all perfect aspirations to enlightened activities. In order to attain the stage of the victorious Buddhas of the past, present, and future. According to the deeds of Samantapidra, the eldest son of the victorious Buddhas is called Samantapidra. I dedicate all these victorious actions, that my deeds may be like his. May my body, speech, mind, activities, and environment always be pure, and May I become equal to this excellent aspiration of Samantapidra. May I tirelessly accomplish the virtuous deeds of Samantapidra and the aspirations of the Bodhisattva Manjusri throughout all future eons. May there be no limit to my activities. May there be no limit to my virtues. Through limitless perseverance, May I accomplish all miraculous deeds. The limit of living beings is like the limit of open space. May the limit of my aspirations be equal to the limit of their activities and passions. 67. Whoever offers to the victorious Buddhas all the perfect joys of gods and men, and the infinite realms of the ten directions adorned with jewels, for as many eons as there are atoms in those realms, they shall gain great merit. But whoever hears this greatest dedication prayer, and is inspired by faith to intensely desire supreme enlightenment, shall gain even higher and holier merit. Whoever recites this aspiration of Samantapidra, will never again endure hellish rebirth will abandon all evil friends, and will soon behold the Buddha of countless light. They will gain all benefits, live in happiness, attain precious human rebirth, and soon become like Samantapidra himself. Even those who in ignorance committed the five unredeemable sins will soon be completely purified. By reciting this aspiration of Samantapidra, they will achieve perfect wisdom, 
A radiant countenance, ethereal form. Auspicious physical marks, and a noble birth. Profane and devilish beings will not trouble them, and they will be honored in the three realms. 68. They will quickly reach the royal tree of enlightenment, residing there to benefit all living beings. As enlightened Buddhas, they will turn the will of the Dharma, taming the demonic hosts. Whoever knows, teaches, or recites this aspiration of Samantapadra shall ultimately attain perfect Buddhahood. May none despair of complete enlightenment. In whatever way valiant man just read in Samantapadra, know how to transfer merit. So do I dedicate all of my own virtues, that I might train to be like them. Through this dedication, praised as supreme, by the victorious Buddhas of the past, present, and future. I dedicate all of these roots of virtue to accomplishing the deeds of Samantapadra. At the moment of my death, may all obscurations be removed, that I may behold the Buddha of boundless light and go to the pure land of perfect bliss. In that blissful land, may I completely fulfill all of these aspirations, and benefit all beings as long as the universe remains. Joyful there, in that blessed assembly of the Buddhas, may I be reborn like the holy ones, from an exquisite lotus, and may the Buddha Amitabha himself foretell my own enlightenment. 69. May I thereafter accomplish countless benefits for living beings in all the ten directions by the power of perfect wisdom in its myriad incarnations through whatever small virtue I have gathered by reciting this aspirations of Samantapadra May all the virtuous aspirations of living beings be accomplished in a single instant through the boundless merit gained by so dedicating these aspiration of Samantapadra may the countless beings drowning in the torrent of suffering reach the stage of Amitabha may this greatest of dedication prayers benefit countless living beings may reciting this ornament of Samantapadra release all beings from the suffering of the lower realms 70. The Ten Great Vows of Bodhisattva Samantapadra 1. To worship and respect all Buddhas 2. To make praises to the thus come ones 3. To practice profoundly the giving of offerings 4. To repent and reform all karmic hindrance 5. To rejoice and follow in merit and virtue. 6. To request that the Dharma will be turned. 7. To request that the Buddhas remain in the world. 8. To always follow the Buddha's teaching. 9. To constantly accord with all living beings. 10. To transfer all merit and virtue universally. 71. The praise to Bodhisattva Samantapadra. Chanted on his birthday. 21. St. Of February in the lunar calendar. The Bodhisattva of great conduct is called universal worthy. The seed of his vow power is multi-layered without bounds. With dignity he reposes upon a six-tusked elephant. By wisdom he is born, transformational from a lotus of the seven gems. In all samadhis, he attains sovereignty. His originally wonderful virtue is pervasive and perfected. Praise of this jeweled awesomeness arrives to teach the Saha world. His efficacious response and spiritual power shake the great 
Thousand Realm Homage to universally worthy Bodhisattva of Great Conduct Who dwells in the silver world of Yi Mei Shan 72. Verse of Transference May the merit and virtue accrued from this work Adorn the Buddha as pure lands Repaying four kinds of kindness above And aiding those suffering in the paths below May those who see and hear of this All bring forth the resolve for Bodhi And when this retribution body is over Be born together in ultimate bliss Note, one should recite this verse of transference to universally transfer all the merit and Virtue that accrue from sutra recitation or performance of any meritorious deeds, for example giving Mahastama Prapta Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva Amita Buddha 73 10 Benefits from Printing Buddhist Sutras and Making Buddha Images L. All evil karma made in the past will either be wiped off or retribution created by past serious offenses reduced. 2. Auspicious spirits constantly protect you and you do not have to experience the disasters of plagues, floods, fires, thieves, armed conflict, or imprisonment. 3. Suffering inflicted by vengeful enemies made in the past will be avoided, and the merit derived from printing. Sutras will allow these enemies to receive the benefits of Dharma, and thereby untie the bond of hatred. 4. Evil ghosts and other yaksha ghosts cannot encroach on you, poisonous snakes or man-eating beasts can not harm you. 5. You will have peace of mind. During the day you will meet with no danger, and at night you will have no bad dreams. Your complexion will be healthy, smooth, and moist. Your energy will be full of vitality. Your business will continue to prosper and meet with Ultai. Made success. 74. 6. You will always have ample food and clothing. Your families will always be at peace, and your prosperity and blessings will constantly increase. 7. Gods and other people will immediately take a liking to things you do or say. Wherever you go, you will always be greeted with respect and revered by happy Crowds of dear friends. 8. Ignorant people will grow wiser, unhealthy people will grow healthier, troubled people will feel happier. And women can become men in their next lives if they wish to do so. 9. You will escape from the three lower realms, and always be reborn in wholesome places, with a hand. Some upright appearance and unusually fine character. You will enjoy supreme happiness and abundant wealth. 10. You will be able to plant innumerable roots of good ness in the blessed minds of all living beings. You will help the living beings to reap bounteous, measureless merits and help them attain the final Buddhahood. 75 76